history, so welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a book review for the recently released The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I wasn't even necessarily intending to get this book and read it, but I had heard some quite positive reviews about it and saw some people talk about it whose opinions I really trust, so that's why I went ahead and bought it. But unfortunately, this book for me was a pretty big letdown and uh, in this video I just want to share my thoughts with you. To add a possibly unpopular opinion to the mix that you can also use as a source, potentially, um, for your decision on whether you want to get this for yourself or not. This book follows a girl called Jude who when she was seven years old her parents were murdered by a fairy assassin who also then kidnapped her and both of her sisters and took them to the fairy court. At the start of the story she is then 17 years old and has basically lived there for a decade with the person who murdered her parents basically acting as her father figure and uh, she has been training alongside the rest of the fairy kind of gentry children and royalty children um, who have never really accepted her because she's mortal and they are obviously fairies or fae. One who is particularly terrible to her is the titular character Prince Cardin who consistently makes fun of her and plays pranks on her and her sister um, just basically looking down on them for being mortal. However, the main plot of the story actually revolves around an upcoming coronation because the king is actually um, sort of getting ready to die basically, which I guess fairies technically are immortal, but at some point in their long, long lives they usually just like feel the urge to like end it all or something. The point wasn't really explained in the book, but basically the king decides to lay down a crown and uh, for one of his sons to pick it up. So that's kind of like the main plot point that the story kind of revolves around. Okay, so let's just say that I went into this book expecting very, very little of it. First of all, because I don't really read books surrounding fairies. I never really feel like they're done particularly well and the one and only exception to that rule for me is um, Stolen Songbird by Danielle L. Jensen which I've talked about all the books in that series extensively on my channel. You can go back and like check to find those videos because I've done them. There's plenty of them out there, believe me. And that kind of is like a really nice twist on the whole fairy situation and uh, like a really well told story and I just like love that entire series. So. That being basically my only comparison, the bar was set particularly high for this book. However, I feel like even if I hadn't read the Stolen Songbird series and loved it so much, this book wouldn't really have been for me. It's not like I had a terrible time reading it or anything of the kind and I didn't violently hate it at all, but I was very frustrated while reading it because the few good points that were there, like the few good plot moments and like story moments and like character moments, those are really really good, but then it just kind of left it at that. To me the book didn't manage to kind of consistently set a high standard in terms of quality of writing and plotting and characters and for that reason I ended up not really enjoying it overly much. My biggest issue with this book is 100% the lack, and I mean complete lack, of world building. I understand that, especially in the YA genre, the fairy subgenre is like pretty established, especially with books by like Sarah J. Mass and stuff like that. Like the existence of different courts and um, like the rules that like humans um, need to follow when they are in the presence of like the fairies and like in the fairyland like not eating their foods and not dancing and things like that those are pretty much like common knowledge so I understand the kind of temptation to completely forego any world building in a book that follows basically the same parameters but I still need some sort of world building and more importantly I really wanted this book to be different to the books that do all the same things anyway. Even with this fairy subgenre being as established as it is, I think it's still possible, in that case even necessary, to put your own twist on it, to put your own spin on it and make something different out of it. But unfortunately, I didn't see anything of the kind in this book. Even the fairy characters themselves were very like briefly only ever explained. It would sometimes just say like, oh, she's an imp or like, he's this other thing, like actual, actually giving them names 
names, but then not following that up with an actual description of what I'm now supposed to think of when I hear the word imp. Also, I understand that the author may potentially just assumed that everyone knew like the unsealy and sealy courts, but I just like want one. And I mean, just one fairy book, even Stone Songbird didn't do that, to specifically explain to me what those courts are, where do they come from, where is that, why did it, why is that even a thing? Like, people just assume these things, but I kind of want a little bit of substance behind that. Additionally, I felt like this book could literally have been set in any kind of setting, because the fact that most of the characters are fairies doesn't really matter that much. The only thing that really sets fairies apart from humans in this case is that they don't die unless they apparently choose to die and that they have like magical powers but even those are so murky and never particularly spelled out or explained. I just like need more world building. That is what I'm trying to get at um, even though this has been a lengthy rant on just that fact but I just like I need freaking world building, like, please, <laughs> build a world, make it unique, make it something different so that it actually matters that the story is set in that particular setting. The next point that kind of annoyed me a little bit is that the plot is very flimsy itself. Like, honestly, there's so little of it that I could probably sum it up in few sentences and it's like, okay. As I said, the main plot point is kind of like this upcoming coronation. Um, so it's kind of like the before and then the after of that like one event sort of thing. But apart from that, there's no real or memorable subplots really that I kind of cared about. There's nothing too complex happening. It's all very straightforward and all very underwhelming, I would say. Nothing that would particularly like stoke my interest in what is happening or that seemed like particularly high stakes to me. There's a few I feel like feeble attempts at some sort of subplot but it never really works out and it never really carries over into like subsequent plot points I guess. Now let's move on to the characters because I have a lot to say about those in particular because for the most part they are just so annoying. <laughs> and I didn't care really about any of them. So as I said, the main character of the book is Jude, who also has a twin sister called Taryn and an older sister called Vivian. And Vivian is actually half fairy herself. So among the sisters, she's actually almost the most interesting one and whose actions seem like the most realistic, even though she doesn't play that huge of a role in the story and you definitely spend more time with Jude than with her. Jude herself for me was a bit of a mixed bag. Um, by the end of the book, I kind of, she kind of grew on me a little bit, but for most of the book, I felt like she was such a confusing and inconsistent character that I, she didn't seem real to me at all and that I really couldn't get behind most of her actions. This is again one of these cases where the author seemed to have wanted her to be kind of like a kick-ass, ruthless character, kind of like morally gray in a way, um, that is supposed to be like, yeah, like really like badass. But instead of really properly showing her in those roles, it was mainly just like said about her or like she would say of herself. Like for example, in the first third of the book or so, it was, we were constantly being reminded of like, she's so good with the sword. Like she would go herself like, I am really talented at that. Everybody says I really go with the sword. Even the guy who like murdered my parents and, uh, who took me home to live with him, <laughs> says I'm good with the sword and stuff like that. But beyond that, there were only maybe two actual scenes in the book where that fact <laughs> was actually proven and we were actually shown within like the plot how good she is at a sword fight and whatnot. And even then, it was very kind of quickly and just like on the side, like, oh, by the way, she's doing this. But like, but it was definitely a case more of like, telling than showing, which is never good. And the same is kind of true for most of her personality traits or supposed personality traits. Um, the book is also trying like way too hard to make her seem like a ruthless person. And um, she constantly is thinking like, oh, I'm such a bad person. I, I like should be feeling this, but I'm not feeling anything. I'm such a bad person. It's like, are you though? For example, she, kind of 
feels like some sort of love for her uh, now father who is technically the man who murdered both her parents and like kidnapped her and her sisters and she feels guilty about those feelings but that in itself I don't really feel is indicative of a bad negative like personality. I feel like to a certain extent that would be natural if you know you have lived with that person for 10 years and he's treated you nicely and you were like a young girl when when like the bad things happened to you or like when he did the bad those bad things to you overall that entire situation like those this entire di family i guess dynamic with like the girls now living with their kidnapper and his wife is very odd and it isn't really explored enough in the book i think because it is said particularly in the book that the older daughter vivian who is like two years older than the girls when they were kidnapped has somehow so many more memories from her life in the old world, so our world, and so she's much more resentful to him for kidnapping them, whereas the younger twins, because they're like two years younger, <laughs> they forgot most of it and they're like fine living there. Like I don't see that big of a difference in this two year gap that is supposed to have like such different, you know, repercussions on them just like how they're so okay with living with their kidnapper and they never really try to get away or anything like that like i just can't fully buy into that basically but on the topic of jude i also think that the motivations for her actions that she takes in the book are largely very odd and like very murky as well like at the beginning of the book she randomly has this ambition to become a knight for a fairy prince or princess or something but that is also again only like explained in like literal words and not so much shown plus it doesn't to me really make sense why a fairy would want a human to like protect them because it shouldn't be implied that they're automatically weaker than fairies so why <laughs> would you want a human protector i don't know then during like the middle of the book or so um, her motivation is largely that she wants to be free of like the control that fairies could potentially have over her because she's human So she makes like a trade to kind of get that independence of fairies or like get that immunity to fairy magic Which I fully understand like that is one motivation. I understand but from there she kind of moves to exclusively wanting like pure raw power which the change to that, again, doesn't really happen organically. It doesn't seem to happen based on a certain event or anything like that. It just, like, is there. And then that's what she's pursuing. And it's just, like, what, what, is it, what does that even mean? Like, what even is power? What kind of power do you want here? And, like, why? Like, I don't know. I just, like, never fully understand or understood why she was doing what she was doing. Because her reasons for her actions... We're just like so all over the place and never really seemed realistic. One thing I will say about her is that I quite appreciated how she handled herself in the face of opposition for the most part. Those were actually some of the few moments where what we had been told about her previously, like how ruthless she is and how she's not scared of anything and like things like that, actually came to life at least to a certain degree. Those were actually a few moments where we actually saw her doing something instead of just talking about it. There's even one situation with her twin sister where her reaction is so badass and I am so just for it and honestly I can relate kind of <laughs> which if you've read the book you will know what I'm talking about and if you have a sister you probably can also relate to a certain degree I don't know how good your relationship is <laughs> just kidding I love my sister I also quite liked how she handled herself in terms of like the romance aspect of the book because there's kind of two guys that she's like has like a little bit of a thing with in the book and in both cases I thought she seemed like very untypically a YA heroine, which is only, can only be a good thing, honestly. There's like, that's just the biggest compliment I could ever give anyone. It's like, they're not a YA heroine <laughs> in that situation. My favorite moment will still forever be when um, one guy, like she realizes that one of the guys like likes her and instead of being like, oh my God, he loves me. I don't deserve his love. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? She's just like, I could use that. That's a weakness. I will exploit that. Like, 
that, that I think is pretty cool and again more in line with what we have been told about her but again it happened a little bit too sporadically and just like a little bit too infrequently for that to really have much of an impact on how I feel about Jude as a character as a whole. So then we have her twin sister Taryn, which I won't talk about too much. I will just say that she's the biggest waste of space I have ever read about. Like, why does she even exist in this book? I always felt like her story arc, well, is barely non-existent anyway, but like her story arc could easily have been absorbed by other characters in the book and you would not have missed her. She's so pointless and I couldn't for the life of me stand her at all. I hate her. She shouldn't exist in this book. She's so annoying and uh, I, don't, I don't want to talk about her anymore because she's just so annoying. So let's move on. And like the last character I just like quickly want to touch on is Prince Cardin. Again, the person who is supposedly the cruel prince and uh, I have I have no positive things to say about him. He has zero redeeming qualities. I don't understand his appeal, as always. I am usually a sucker for hate to love relationships. This was not well done at all. There is no foundation, really, for his hate. And there's no real explanation that would excuse his actions. Like, again, I compare him to the main person of, like, the main guy from Stolen Songbird, who is also kind of a shitty person at first. But then, as the story progresses, you'll learn about his motivations and why he's acting the way he's acting. And those are like, almost legitimate reasons, where you're like, okay, it makes sense, it's still shitty that he's acting like an asshole, but I understand where he's coming from. With Prince Cardin, you get nothing. There's nothing that like, could possibly excuse his actions, whatsoever. There is one moment where he like, breaks down whatever and it's like a paragraph he talks about like I hate you because I hate you because and all the while he sounds like a petty jealous child that is all he sounds like it's like those aren't real reasons and then one of his reasons is like and this is not a spoiler I think but it's literally like I hate you because I can't stop thinking about you it's disgusting how much I think about you and I'm like what are you like 12 I don't how is that? I don't understand. I don't understand anything, anything. And then he supposedly has like a love situation with some other character, like another fairy person. And I'm like, but like how, why, when? He seems to like her, but then suddenly he doesn't like her anymore. And now he likes Jude. Like, how did that even happen? I didn't even know this had happened. Like, I just like, I'm so confused. I know this isn't the most eloquent review I've ever done, but I feel like this review is about as all over the place as the book is, so you're the reason why. Also, Chris Cardin has, like, again, no personality whatsoever, at least none beyond being an asshole. And we're constantly being told how supposedly charming he is, but he never once acted in any way that was, I would say, is like charming. So I don't understand where that comes from, except it's probably the most overused description of a male character in any book. Can everybody just stop being charming? There's so many more things more important than being charming. And I feel like most intelligent people can see beyond that. Like if you're an asshole, it doesn't matter how charming you are because I will still be able to tell you're an asshole. Like how, it's just like, yeah, he's a dick, but he's also a charming dick. So those panties are dropping, I promise. Why, why, why? I don't understand. So suffice it to say, overall, this book was very disappointing to me. Again, it's particularly sad that it's not a complete trash fire and it sometimes veers off into the realm of like marginally good writing and good storytelling. But then it comes immediately back to being a trash fire and then I, I, that just makes me particularly sad. Like if an author has no talent and the book is really, really shit, then at least like that's how it is, right? But I don't think that that is the case with Holly Black. I think she has talent and she writes pretty well sometimes, but the story is just so unimaginative and it's so dull and so overused and just like, this book exists in like various forms already. This did not need to be written, like added to the list of books that are just like all the same. I ended up giving this book still two stars because I did sometimes enjoy myself. And again, I don't think it was a complete piece of shit, but it was very close, which is sad. I just like wish it, it had been done better. I feel like 
even the same plot could have been done better with like more interesting characters and like more unique characters everything and like again more world building and by more i mean any world building at all because there was literally none in this somehow i still feel like i'm gonna read the sequel when it comes out probably next year just because the ending i was like i kind of want to know what happens next i don't expect to like it any more than this but i still probably will read it because i'm a masochist i don't know so that is it for my review for The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I hope you enjoyed this video even though it wasn't too positive. Um, I just, I needed to talk about the book. So let me know if you've read The Cruel Prince and if you agree with me or you had a completely different experience with it. That's always a possibility, of course. Let me know in the comments down below what you think and uh, come back very soon for another video. In the meantime, like this video and click subscribe so you don't miss out on the new stuff. And I will see you then. Have a lovely week. Bye!